All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Culture Kitchen. My name is Simon Schachner. I'm the host of this weekly online cooking show. This is VIU's weekly cooking engagement, where we feature different students each week, showing us step-by-step -step how to cook one of their favorite dishes. Uh, here's some music there from Berna Boy. Um, so today is a special edition in a way because it's the first time that we're having a student club. This is actually a national organization as well. They're called WUSC, it's the name of the organization. And we've got uh, three students. I think there's even a fourth somewhere off screen. Uh, we've got Emily, Nadipo, Emmanuel, and Roderick is somewhere in the production. So I wanna welcome all of you to the program. Uh, here on Culture Kitchen, and maybe we could start off with a round of introductions, and then I'll start asking some questions about WUSC, and then we'll get into the cooking. Okay. So, yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, thank you, Simon. Um, my name is Nadifo. I am uh, one of the former SRP students. Um, I came here 2015, um, five years ago through WUSC, and um, I'm in the nursing program. I'm in my fourth year now. And I'm almost done with my degree. Um, yeah, and um, I've been involved with WUSC since I came to Canada. Um, I've co uh, like I chaired one year and the other year I did co-chair with Emily. And um, it has been really rewarding to be welcoming students the same way I was welcomed. And um, yeah, and I'm very excited um, and a little bit nervous today. <laughs> To be part of this, but I'm I'm mostly I'm excited to show you guys um, a Somali dish and um, yeah, and we'll tell you more about Wusk. Um, yeah. Great. Well, thank thank you so much, uh, Nadifo, and nice to meet you. Nice to meet you okay. too. Okay, um, next up in the same bubble. <laughs> <laughs> and um, Emmanuel Emmanuel Lemu, an SRP student from uh, Kenya. I came to Canada in 2018 and um, it's like uh, the best experience ever. I'm loving my time here. I'm loving every person I meet and it's just, it's just, it's amazing. Um, right now I'm doing practical nursing. Uh, it's a diploma program and um, yeah, welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I like that. Usually it's my, my kitchen and for today's purpose they're like, TV studio, so it's kind of cool. New experience, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, there's also, is Roderick still there? Um, no, he left. Oh, he left, okay, but he is another WUSC member. So anyway, yeah. we'll talk to him another time. Uh, Emily, you're next. Hi, so I'm Emily. I am a third year global studies student at BIU. Uh, this is my third year uh, volunteering with WUSC as well, and my second year as co-chair of the committee with Nadifo. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining me here on the program. And uh, as this is kind of a different one where we're, we're doing two things, we're sharing food and cooking as usual, but we're also going to learn about WUSC. So my first question is probably the, the first one people have, which is what does WUSC stand for? The letter. Uh, so the WUSC. Yeah. <laughs> WUSC stands for World University Service of Canada. It is a nonprofit organization that focuses on empowering youth through education with a special emphasis on girls' education. Excellent. And earlier, when uh, Nadifo was introducing herself, she said SRP. She came as an SRP yes. student. So what is SRP? Yeah, so one of the main programs that WUSC has is called the Student Refugee Program. And so what that means is that every year, uh, VIU sponsors two students. Some universities in Canada sponsor more as they have more access to more funds. But every year, VIU sponsors two students uh, for their first year in Canada. All of their tuition, and living expenses, everything is covered. Uh, while they adjust to their new life and everything like that. So what we do with our weekly meetings with our committee is we check in with the students, make sure everything's running smoothly, take care of any concerns that they might have, as well as getting them set up for life here, like uh, getting their health uh, care set up, uh, dental, vision, stuff like that, um, setting them up with laptop, phone if needed, um, just everything that they need to get started for like, living here. Mm -hmm. and, and this uh, program has been active at VIU for how many years? Uh, just over 10 years. 10 years, and it's two students a year generally for each year since the beginning? Yeah, uh, the year in 2015, we uh, had three students uh, due to the Syrian refugee crisis. Yeah, and so, and like, uh, you know, I've been part of VIU as a student and, and for the last few years as staff, 
And I know it's something that sort of the whole uh, community and uh, both on the university institution side and students support uh, the funding of it. Can you talk just yes. briefly about that? Because it's a yeah, big effort, so, um, right? To bring people from overseas yeah. <laughs> and support them for a year, as you said. Yeah, so part of our contributions to the Student Region Program comes from the Students' Union. And then, so they match what we fundraise throughout the year. Our, one of our main fundraisers is called the Hair and Beat Gala. It's like a dinner slash entertainment event. And then we also have an auction that usually happens every year. Uh, we did not have it last year because of COVID. Um, not sure when that's gonna be happening again. Hopefully we'll have something in place for fundraising this year. Um, the other thing is that uh, every student at VIU, part of their student fees goes towards work. And so I can't remember what the previous amount was, but I believe now it's up to 38 cents per student or maybe a little bit more. Um, we just had a referendum last year at VIU that students had to vote whether or not we wanted to increase this levy and our vote went through with flying colors. So we're super grateful to the VIU community for that vote. Excellent, so good to hear about that. And I was, I was very happy when that, that thing passed too. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's had an impact on so many individuals, life-changing, right? Yes, experience. Of course. So uh, I see Roderick's joined us. Do you, we, we did our round of introductions, Roderick. Do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Um, yeah. Um, hello, um, my name is Roderick and I'm a student at VIU and I'm part of the local committee for for 2020. And I've been working with SUS for three or four months now and my, part, my experience has been great coming together as a community, working to them, helping them and creating a suitable future for them. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for being here. And at this point, let's let's change our attention. We'll still try to uh, connect things to the WUSC uh, organization as well as the experience of the students who have come here through sponsored through the program. But I'll pass it over to our chefs, our, our illustrious TV chefs uh, for tonight's episode. Uh, Nadifu and Emmanuel. So maybe you can uh, review the menu for us. What's on? What are you cooking tonight? Um. So I'm. I've cooked um rice, like Somali rice. We call it bris, bris, um in Somali. And um, I made rice um and chicken. Um. So just the style of cooking is different because it's like Somali. I use like a lot of spices. I'll be um showing you guys like the kind of spices that I've used and um. I'll be showing the final result too shortly. Just give me a second. Excellent. And Emmanuel, you've got, oh, you, you've got it there. Okay. All right. So I've used basmati rice. All of you guys know, like you can get like a superstore or Walmart and, um, and um, I've used chicken wings. Mm -hmm. um, so these are most spices that I've used are Italian spices. Um, I've used uh, the lemon and pepper. Um, I've used the garlic class. Like it has like, it has, um, I think firstly garlic, pepper. It's like just a blend of different spices and it just gives like that flavor to the food. And um, yeah, so I would recommend. Um, and um, garlic powder. Um, Firstly, I like I like getting this because it's already like cut up and like dried and stuff, and it doesn't go bad easily. So good tip, mm -hmm. like even though it's like small, um, it's in a small container, but it is really handy. Like it won't go bad easily and stuff like that. So I usually get this from um, superstore, and um, yeah, and um, even though it's finished now, um, I love like garlic and onion, so I do use that a lot in my cooking. And um, this is also um, a garlic um, paste. Yes. Okay. That looks. That that will save time. So some of these things, I, I think you you definitely adapted in the context here and, and helps with the student lifestyle. Things will be quicker, but the same flavor, similar, right? Yeah. 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 Um. And yeah. And um, I also use like paprika. Um, okay. and um, curry powder. Nice. So it's a lot of spice. Like it just makes this. Sorry, sorry guys. Oh, what happened there? <laughs> I just dropped my phone. 
Yeah. Because it's like hooked up to the charger because I didn't, it was 20 from 24% and um, we didn't want to take the risk of going off life. That's right. That's right. I appreciate um, that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so are you guys ready to see the final product? Yeah. Or I am would anyway. You, like, more? you can ask me questions. So well, I, okay. More. So I actually have some familiarity with Somali food and okay. I love everything I've had. And I wish there were some restaurants around. If you know I any, know, I know. I know. It's just love like to know and check yeah. it out. But anyway, the Somali rice I've had before had raisins in it. Are you familiar? Okay. Yeah, yeah, fried, yeah I know. Fried I raisins. Know. Uh, and that that was yeah. a nice touch. And then the other thing that was different for me that I learned was the banana. Sometimes people will put banana slices. <laughs> Yes, um, Somalis, like we love a uh, banana. It's like we eat it with anything, literally anything, um, yeah. with pasta, with rice. Um, even if you're having like something completely different that you can't eat with banana, like we don't mind. We just have it. <laughs> just add it to the meal. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just like, it just makes the whole thing better. You guys should try it. Rice and banana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried it. I, it was different for me, of course. And I thought, hey, this is a good idea. It works. <laughs> Yeah, the raisins. When, I was, yeah. when I was new here, um, I had like this funny experience. I was at the cafeteria. I had, um, I made rice and, um, and I had the banana on the side. So I cut it up on top of like, put it on top of the rice. And I was, I was having lunch with my friends and they were like, uh, what are you doing? I was like, what? Like, I thought it was a normal thing because where I come from, it's like, 99% like um, specific area of Kenya I am from is Somali. So I, ha I didn't know that that was a different thing. So I was like, what do you guys mean? It was just like a funny, you know, like little experience, yeah. but yeah. You don't know, you wouldn't okay. know. A lot of things about our cultures and like our habits, we don't know that it's different until we're outside of our cultural group, right? Or, or out of yeah. our, country, our community. So like, yeah, that is kind of a funny one. It's so normal for you. You wouldn't even think of it. And for everyone yeah. around, you're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would expect me, like, I think they were expecting me to eat the banana separate and like the rice. Mm -hmm. But I was like, no, we, we do it different in Somali. The Somali style. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Are you guys ready? I'm ready. You know, I'm going to actually go to the Facebook feed and see if there's any questions so far. But yeah, I okay. could bring the rice yeah, over no, and can, show, show the wait. viewers what you've got going on. Okay. I'm just going to get onto the right Facebook feed here. Oh, there are some comments. So, we have we have some promotion for WUSC, different ways people could get involved. So we'll touch on that later. But from, oh yeah, viewer. So David is watching and he, he said he was going to ask about if you're going to add raisins. So he's heard about that too. He's someone who hosted previously. He's from Ghana. Oh, okay. He's heard um, of the raisin thing too. So uh, uh, yeah, 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 I didn't. Of course, I don't like raisin. Sorry, guys. So I did not add that. But yeah, okay. usually Somali rice, they, they add that. Mm -hmm. And okay. cinnamon well, sticks and stuff. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. so we're ready to see. Let's see the final product here. Okay. Um, can you guys see? Yep. Looks good. Yeah. And it smells really good. I wish you guys <laughs> could smell. <laughs> It smells really good and it tastes really good. So this is the final product you guys can see. Um, I like to finish the final touch up with um, um, peppers, like green peppers and onions and stuff to just mm -hmm. make the food like more colorful and presentable. Um, yeah. I've used also frozen vegetables like um, corn, peas, uh, carrots and all that. Um, and it's kind of hard for you guys to see, I guess, but yeah. Yeah. So when you cook the like, are you using a rice maker or do you do you cook in the pot and like fry onions yeah. in the bottom of the pan? No, uh, yeah, yeah, I used um, the cooking pot, um, not the rice cooker. Yeah. I just don't like the rice cooker because like it's just kind of for me. No offense to people that use rice cooker, it <laughs> yeah. makes the work easy. But when uh, my mom is a chef and I was given like uh, actual professional training to make food, so. 
it's like I to me I see it as like a lazy way of cooking like you're escaping the whole process and it won't come out as good <laughs> so uh, so like I go through um um, I put the onions and the oil, I give it like a minute or two. I, I put the garlic, um, I let it fry, but I do make my rice a little bit different. Um, instead of like adding everything in the, chi the chicken, um, I do uh, first like add the rice um, to, the, um, to the onions and um, the vegetables. Like just, I don't have like any water in it yet. Um, just a bit of oil, right? Huh? You have oil in there though? The cooking oil in yes, the bottom of yes, the Yes, I do. Okay, let me you just fry it up. <laughs> Before you add the water, you fry it up to get the flavors. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. First, what I do is uh, I boil the chicken. Um, so instead of using just water, I use the the water of the chicken. Uh -huh. So that would give like the food like extra flavor and it will um come out like really good. So once I boil the, 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 the chicken, um, I do take out the, the, the wings or chicken legs, whatever I'm using at that point. And I keep um, the water um, like really warm. So like it doesn't, it won't be like really cold when I add to it. Mm -hmm. um, I, kinda, I don't know. D does that make sense? Like do you guys- It, it makes sense to I'm me. Explaining? And uh, it's, uh, I see why you don't, you don't use a rice cooker because you're not gonna infuse that amount of flavor when you're just doing yeah, it that way. Yeah, you really yeah. need to, your, your way of cooking it, you're really frying some ingredients together and infusing mm -hmm, flavors. Yeah, yeah. And the seasoning the will like, yeah, infuse yeah. to the food more. And I, I do rice that way too. Sometimes if I'm cooking like a more of a Central American or even like a Jamaican mm -hmm. rice and peas, you always use the pot and you have to fry, uh, yeah. you know, kind of fry the rice with the oil and the onion and the thyme and whatever mm -hmm. flavors you're adding. Yeah. Yeah. And even habanero peppers, like hot yeah, peppers yeah. to show at the beginning. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that looks really good. Some people online are saying we got some Sabri expressing her love for rice. So that's cool. Also, David, wow, that looks really good, he's saying. Other people, good idea. We've got some there's a question about is there ugali in there? Like in, um, I guess in the no, kitchen. Uh, no, no, it's not in that dish. Yeah, two different yeah. dishes. The ugali yeah. is in the process. Um, it'd be ready, I think, soon. Is, is it ready? Okay, yeah, it, it is already ready. But um, yeah, the, the rice is separate. And then we have ugali. We'll show you guys. And okay. um, yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much for that, uh, that, that rice recipe. I think some people are already asking for the recipe to be posted on the Facebook comments. So maybe after the show, you can post if you have time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can write, write down. some of the steps. And, yeah. Um, and cool. yeah, and when I'm cooking, usually I don't like measure my spices. I go until okay. like, be like, okay, this looks good. But yeah. um, but yeah, I can, I can just put the ingredients and stuff ingredients, so people yeah. know. Yeah. Great. Okay, so what's Emmanuel up to over there? He's working away? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Hey Emmanuel, what are you what are you cooking or what have you cooked today? Um, today uh, I've made a, a Malawian dish and uh, it's um, uh, kale sukuma. Uh, it's kale or sukuma, and then um, I use uh, onion. I start with the onion, and then you add after the onion you add some little beef. You add beef. After beef, we use the spices that Nadifo just showed uh, all of you guys. We use the same spices for the for the but sukuma some wiki. Of them, some, of them. some of them. Yeah, yeah, we use some of the spices for the sukuma wiki. And uh, after that, um, we added some uh, tomatoes and then the sukuma wiki itself, the, the kales itself. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's ready there. And then uh, the side we do ugali. Okay. Whoever was asking, on the side, I yeah. made ugali, yeah. <laughs> so for people who don't know, like we had, uh, we had some other hosts several weeks ago from, well, it was, it was Taffy, who's originally from Zimbabwe, but grew up, spent lots of her life in Uganda and Kenya. She made ugali, ugali. it might've been a different name. I forget, uh, Leti was on the show too, and they were talking about the many countries around Africa, they have a version of that with a different name. So that's, what else is it known as? Do you know, like, 
Yeah. When I say um, Shima, before we went live, there's like Shima in some countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I forget the other ones, but yeah, it's a cornmeal, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yep, it's cornmeal. Okay. And uh, in Kenya, it's called Ugali, just like yeah. you say. And uh, in Malawi, they call it Sima. Uh, see, okay, so that's Sima, Shima in, I think, maybe, yeah, Mozambique or Zambia. I've heard, yeah, I've seen yeah, it and heard different yeah, names. Yeah, it's very quite common. Mm -hmm. Is that ready? Um, Can we see it? Yeah, it's ready. Everything is ready. Okay. Okay. Um, do you want to put it in the plate? Yeah, we can put it in the plate. Excuse me. So, so we have a, a comment from Catherine. Yay, VIU Wusk, the student refugee program rocks. Yes, it does. Thank you, Catherine. And lots of collaboration at VIU to help the student refugee program happen. And there's lots of ways to get involved. I have a feeling this might be Daryl, maybe Daryl and Catherine together. Uh, Daryl is a staff liaison for WUSC committee. So he's just letting people know there's different ways to get involved and that if people are interested in knowing more about WUSC, there's a website. So you can, he posted the links on the comments or sorry, Catherine did. And, um, but you can also just Google WUSC or WUSC Canada and find out more. Okay, so Ugali being dished out there by Emmanuel. All right. This wow. smells so good and looks so good. <laughs> you guys just are too far. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day there'll be the technology where there'll be like it's 4D and there's like a way to like share smells through the internet. Yeah. So I think yeah. we're a few years off. Anyhow, so let's see what you've made there. You could just tilt the plate towards the camera a bit without spilling it on the camera. So you've got the ugali on one side. Yeah, like this is the ugali. Yeah. This is the ugali. And this one here is uh, the sukuma wiki now. It has some looks like a lot of kale. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and, and beef. Yeah, yeah, and this beef, beef in there too. And, uh, onions, other vegetables, yeah. yeah. Very so nice. There is a lot of, like, a lot of kale. Yeah. That's why it's called Sukuma Wiki. It's like <laughs> mainly that is the main ingredient. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, nice. making, and uh, making ugali requires a skill. It's not done by just anyone. <laughs> you really have to be good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so are you saying you're good at it or not good at it? Yeah, I'm saying I'm really good at it. You're good at it. Okay. Yeah, he did a good job. <laughs> okay, well, all that food looks really delicious. I wish I could try it. Um, I'm just seeing if there's any more comments or questions online. We have... Oh, and I wanted to mention, um, we usually we have um, a Thanksgiving, uh, we call it Friendsgiving, and we usually yeah. hold around that time. It's a WUSC event. It's like, we just, that brings together um, all the local committee members and the new students, like, just like introducing them to the Canadian culture and we cook different food and, and share it. Well, I, I hope COVID gets better and we will be able to do that, but it doesn't seem. Um, yeah, so like next year, probably. <laughs> yeah, Fingers that sounds crossed. like a really nice event. So yeah, just yeah. gonna connect with, uh, there's some people watching, so some shout outs. There's Dana, there looks like Riley is watching, uh, Vespucci. Rebecca, uh, David, Catherine, uh, Meru, Sabri. There's somebody, or there's a folks from VIU Shkap, the, the gathering place. That's cool. They're yeah. tuning in and checking out our uh, different department. And I should mention actually, so uh, tomorrow is uh, Orange Shirt Day right across Canada. And that's why I'm wearing my orange shirt and the gathering place at VIU is hosting an online event for that. And that's um, what my shirt says here is every child matters. And this is a campaign uh, to remember and um, remember all the children, the indigenous children that were forced to go to a residential school at an earlier time in, in Canada's history. So it's really a, 
a sad part of Canadian history, but it's something that's very important to recognize and acknowledge. Um, what happened, learn about what happened in, in that time to so many children and families that were affected negatively. Um, a lot of people are still traumatized from that. And anyway, so this is a campaign that some folks started some years ago. And uh, yeah, so you, if you're out and about, you might see people wearing the orange shirt and the shirts are for sale at the VIU campus store. And it's part of the funds go to a, a program to support uh, Indigenous students. So anyway, that's tomorrow. I just thought I'd mention that. And it was uh, good to see our, our colleagues at Shkap, the, the Gathering Place, watching our show. And uh, if anyone's interested, again, go just search uh, Orange Shirt Day VIU Gathering Place. You'll probably find the information there. Okay, so back to Culture Kitchen of what we're doing today. So we have students from WUSC, Emmanuel, uh, and, uh, Nadifu, Emily, and Roderick was there. Um, <laughs> he comes and goes. It's an Adifo. Oh, sorry, what did I say? Nadifo. <laughs> okay, I said it wrong. Nadifo, Nadifo, sorry. And um, yeah, the food looks so good. And just wondering if maybe since we have a few more minutes to maybe talk about your own experience transitioning uh, to Canada. I liked your story there with the bananas and the rice in the cafeteria, but Emmanuel, is there anything uh, that you would like to share or any like interesting stories of, of your process of like when you first arrived um, to VIU? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, okay, coming, coming from the camp, uh, like from the camp right here to Canada was like a, a really big transition for me. It was a, a big one, but uh, with the help of uh, VAU, the local committee, and uh, I think Nadifo was the first chair by then, and uh, with the help, uh, like navigating me around, you know, that before school started, it made me feel comfortable, like, like I can just start school. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not easy because also, you know, my family's back home and of course I miss them. Uh, it's been two years now here, I miss them. And uh, <clears throat> education wise also like the system of education was also that different, but I believe with time, I, with time I'll get to, to know it better. And by now I already feel comfortable with it. So yeah, so thanks to the local committee for making me feel at all that good. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Emmanuel. Uh, Nadifo, any any recollections or stories you'd like to share from your early days? I know you've been here, is it four years already or more? Um, oh, five years. No, five years. Think, yeah. Um, one of the things that I remember is um, coming to Canada, I was expecting, like, I was like, okay, it will be really cold. And my mom was like, she packed me like the heaviest jackets ever and the biggest boots and stuff. It, it was just like, I didn't know what to get ready for. It's like, I didn't know what to expect, like the people. And I was like, when I get in there, uh, like at the, to the airport, like, what would I, would I meet people? Like, how would it be? I, I was just scared that I would get lost because I didn't know anybody, but, um, when I got off the plane, um, it was like 22 hours of flight and it's like exhausting and long. Um, so when I um, when I got off the plane at Nanaimo Airport, like there's like boards on my name and like well, people welcoming me, like the local committee. And it just made me feel like, okay, it just like, you know, like that is, you feel like relief. Um, and um, it was good. Um, my first, I'll tell you guys, it's funny, my first experience in Kenya, we don't have snow. So the first time I saw snow, okay, um, I looked in the, in the VIE um, residence and this morning I woke up and um, I looked through the window and it was like, there was this white stuff all over the grass and, and I was like, what? Like, in my head, I was just thinking like, Maybe a lot of birds like just pooped all over the like the grass. It just looked like that. Like, I didn't, and then I, I I came out. I like like touched it and stuff. I was like, oh wow, okay, this is the snow. Okay, so it was that was like something that I would never forget because it was completely different. Um, but yeah, um, I love BC, the island. This like um, a lot of things to explore and. Um, it's kind of relatable when it comes to like nature and stuff, like as compared to like Kenya. Um, but yeah, so uh, I do love it here. 
And um, my first um, experience of going outside of BC was I went to Regina to um, during the Christmas because I was like feeling kind of lonely and stuff. Um, and it was so cold. It was 41, like negative 41. I did not negative, get out yeah. of the room. Like, no, it was just. Yeah, I don't think I would ever like live in um, places like that. But yeah, but I love BC. I think I would live here. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, you're well, off to a good start with five years and you're almost in your nursing program. So that's yeah. Really here. Thank you for sharing that. Um, that's really, it's really good. I think for people to hear your stories, um, you know, because a lot of times we'll hear, we just hear about programs and stuff and they don't necessarily, the people who support or are interested, they don't always get to hear from you directly. So this is really nice that you're, mm -hmm, yeah. I think for people to put, you know, faces to the names or to the numbers of, you know, we have the two students a year and stuff. So I really appreciate you sharing and being Absolutely. on this program with us, Culture Kitchen, doing something a bit different by highlighting uh, the WUSC program. And uh, of course, your wonderful cooking and recipes from different parts of the world. Um, is there any, any kind of back to the food, like any things that you would recommend people try from some of the comfort foods you grew up with in addition to the things you made today? Like, is there something like about Somali cuisine, like you say people just got to try? Um, okay, so, um, we do make um i haven't seen people like make that here and it's like something different um we do make like liver mm -hmm. liver like with like um garlic and onions and spices and stuff and it's like it tastes so good you can eat it with like anything pretty much bread um tortilla anything but it's just like when I went to like restaurants and stuff, I don't see it on the menu. It's like if you go to Edmonton or Toronto, you would yes. find it there because there's like a lot of smaller restaurants. But um, mm -hmm. it's like one of the you can have it like as breakfast or as lunch or yeah, not pro most probably not like dinner, but lunch or um, breakfast usually. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So uh, if I find myself in Edmonton, I would. Mm -hmm. I know one of the things I'd be doing is looking for a Somali restaurant because I, I knew that about Edmonton too. Yeah. Where I've had it before was like at a restaurant was in Toronto. But yeah, I know Edmonton's another place. So I'll look for the liver dish on the menu. Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, yeah. you can also like look for sukar. It's called sukar, like mm -hmm. sukar. Mm -hmm. um, so if you ask that, like you will, yeah, you will love that. Okay. It's a different. Actually, I, I do um, have a not, Huh? I have a question for you. So um, a friend of mine who's originally from Somalia was telling me about the halwa is different. So I'm using, do you know the sweet halwa? halwa? Yeah, halwa. halwa. Yeah. The sweet halwa we see around here is more often from Lebanon, or Middle East, and it's with ground sesame and tahini mm -hmm. and stuff, where this friend was telling me it's red. The Somali one is more of like a red halwa. Yeah, okay, I will just Google the picture and I'll show you guys because it's like okay. different and it, it tastes it's totally way better than, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I had a mission in Toronto to try to find that uh, red halva and I didn't. Yeah, find you can, it, you can find it time. like in Edmonton or um, Toronto. Or Toronto. Right? Yeah. That's still on sort of my list of like thing, things to try and to find when I'm in Toronto. I don't really I go to Edmonton actually. When, but I, Toronto, when I went actually. to um this is what it looks like that's what it okay. looks like yeah so totally different than like the yeah the it is Middle Eastern it is kind. totally different and it tastes yeah. like way better it's good. <laughs> so what, is, what is it made out of though um, okay so they have the ingredients here um granulated sugar um light brown sugar cornstarch um oil and water it's easy to make Right. But, um, only if you know what you're doing. <laughs> right, it is, right. Yeah, and it takes it takes time too. Like so, you have to be really okay. patient. Um, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for showing me that. I've never actually <laughs> seen it. I just heard about. Yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, when I went to Edmonton, I brought it back here. Like I, I got oh, like cool. one kg of it, and I'd be like, because <laughs> they don't yeah. have that here. So. Oh, yeah. no, totally not. Oh, well, thanks for that. And Emmanuel, uh, we'll just wrap up the show with uh, anything that, uh, for, so you were in, in Kenya as well, right? For most of your yeah. life? Yeah. 
Any any foods that you sort of say people are, are a must try? Um, what I would tell everyone to try would be chapati. I don't know if anyone of okay, has chapati. ever heard of that, Bread. but yeah. chapati is a good thing to try with. Uh, you can eat it with uh, meat, it can be chicken, it can be beef, but mostly back there, they eat it with beans, mostly. Mm -hmm. Kidney beans. Chapati, yeah, kidney beans, you do chapati with beans, but I totally recommend chapati. If you, if you want to try something there, just go for the chapati with the... Uh, with beans. Yeah, chapati is awesome. Yeah, yeah. and That's also it's um it's hard finding. I've, I've when I first came here, I wanted to look like to to, to go somewhere to get, especially the ingredients for making chapati. It was a little like it was really hard finding it. <clears throat> but and uh, also there are no restaurants like uh, Kenyan restaurants around there, and I haven't That's been right. to one yet in Canada. So. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, thanks so much for, for that. Uh, and thanks also to Emily, who's there in the background, and Roderick for making an appearance. That's uh, your WISC uh, folks from VIU. And this has been a special edition, the WISC edition of Culture Couch. And I'll just let people know that if you do want to get involved with WISC, as Emily mentioned, there will still be receiving two new students this year and they're gonna be looking for some volunteers. So if you're a VIU student and you wanna get involved and support some brand new students, and uh, yeah, just visit the WISC website or um, yeah, I think that's probably the best way or just search. I think there's a Facebook group too. Emily? To butt in. Yeah, <laughs> I'm jump in, sure to cut in. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. So uh, as I mentioned in the comments below, there is a WISC email that you can contact us at and we will uh, get back to you right away with our weekly meeting times. Um, like I said, we will be receiving brand new students in January. Fingers crossed everything pans out. Um, this will actually be a really unique opportunity for new members to see the process of arrival because usually our students come in August and new members won't usually see that part till the following year so this is actually a really cool year to get involved and be part of the whole process in the middle of the school year very good well thank you for that and there, i just saw there isn't uh a comment for nadifo um will it be dr nadifo in a few years so somebody might know something about your aspirations there oh <laughs> yeah um Actually, um, nursing is my first degree and I plan to um, apply medical school and get ready for that um, after I graduate. So um, yeah, whoever said that, yes, wish me luck. And um, I'm, my ultimate goal is to be a neurosurgeon. Like that is the specialty I'm looking forward to pursue. So um, fingers crossed, I will okay. be doing anything it takes so to get you, there. You want someone to watch and check in with. Right? That's awesome. That's, that's, that's so great to hear. So thanks again. Uh, and to all the viewers, thanks for tuning in live. For everyone else who tuned in after the fact, that's awesome too. If any VIU students out there or recent alumni of VIU want to host in the future, please email me. My email is there, simon.shackner at viu.ca. Uh, thanks again for e to each of you and to the WISC committee in general and all the folks in, in our VIU community that's supporting WISC over the years. It's really been wonderful to have uh, students join us from Yeah, thank you for having yeah. us. This is really good. Yeah, <laughs> cool. And now I'm gonna have to like think of how can I make some of those recipes. Chapati, I think I can make. That one I think is pretty straight. Um, I will try to um, jot down your email and I will send you the recipe so you can share with your yeah, on your platforms and stuff. Sounds great. Okay, thanks a lot. I'm going to skip you. back to that song. Yeah, I'd like to end it with a bit of music. I know we're going a bit yeah. long. But yes. Let's get the Burna Boy again. Here we go. All right, Culture Kitchen signing off. Thank you, folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.